All right, everybody. Our next guest is a very funny guy who's been on everything from Live at Gotham to Last Comic Standing and can currently be seen and heard on the Anthony Cumia Show with Dave Landau. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Dave Landau. Dave, how you doing, bro? Good, man. How about you? Doing good, man. You know, just uh, living the dream these past uh, seven months, you know, just <laughs> staying. Yeah, every, you know, and... every day's a miracle. I agree. <laughs> and now we're getting closer and closer to uh to november going through all these the, the debates now and all these things and the climate is crazier than ever uh like this year just seems like it's there's just so much more on the line than normal elections it just seems like like so crazy man i think we're ruined either way if i'm being perfectly honest <laughs> whatever whatever happens <laughs> is just gonna be bad and it's not even because of the person in charge. I mean, it's just whatever happens, it's going to just take this very cold civil war that we're in and turn it into a <laughs> nice, hot, flaming civil war. It'll be good. There's always been, you know, Democrats, Republicans, always been ideologies like, but now it's like, if if you if I'm a Biden guy, you're a Trump guy. It's like f you, man. Like, you know, it's it's hate hatred right out of the gates. There's no middle ground. There's no oh, you know, he he likes Trump, but he's still a nice guy. Or... It's a great honor to be able to introduce for the first time ever anywhere the 45th. <laughs> yeah, it, well, if if you don't have like a visceral hate for Trump, people just all of a sudden are like, well, he's obviously racist and has killed gay people. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. And then if you don't, like, say, if you say, like, I'm a little bit worried about Biden's cognitive abilities, you know, because of the stuttering. I resent the laughter. It's one of the things I want to say to you parents who might have laughed. You know, think about it. Stutter is the only thing people think they can laugh at. <laughs> then they think you're, you know, it's, and then even if you say you like Biden, then the other side gets angry at you. And it's strange because to me, the whole political system is flawed. People know he doesn't you're want to a senator. I'm not going to answer the question Why because, would you answer that because question? the you question is, of, the New question Supreme is, Court justice, the radical question, left. Will you who shut is up, your, man. Listen, who is on your list, Joe? Yeah. We are supposed to be a, a people in charge of the government. We have become a government in charge of the people. We're all being just played right now. And I'm not saying that that's on on Trump at all. I'm just saying it's on both. Both the sides should not be allowed pay until they fix the problem in this country. And then we'll watch in 24 hours. Everything will get better. <laughs> Come on, man. But what's crazy, too, is like you used to be able to if you have a, like, a, like a shitty president like Nixon or, or Carter or whatever, Clinton's mm -hmm. uh, Bush, whatever side you're on, <laughs> you can right. always say that. Oh man, this is great for comedy, but now yes. it's not. God forbid. Like you, it's. I I think comedy is also a victim of this in, in a way. With you know where you, it's not good for comedy. You can't go up there and riff. You know if you go up there, like in Manhattan or something at a club and start going off on Biden and doing pro Trump material, I would assume it's not going to go over well. I, I mean, you know. You yeah, you get burned alive in the park <laughs> <laughs> on a pile of Hebrew masks. That's how I feel about you. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh, man, does she have to do that? Wow. What the fuck was that? Wow. That's what we call improv here. <laughs> yeah. You can't go against the grain anymore as a comedian. I, I mean, you no, know, it's so weird because I I stand fairly moderate and people even say that's this like, it's like oh, that's cowardly. It's like, no, I just I want to hear both sides because it, it, the every office is ran by humans. Humans are flawed. So I just can't 100 percent go with anything. Right. And, I, and I'm I'm 38. But still, when I was a kid, you didn't talk about who you were voting for or anything. It was always a very private thing. I never. And now you're right. Like comedy's bad for comedy 
And now if you say anything about either party, people get actually angry. There's a different group to get pissed off at you in this country for everything you're not supposed to say. Can't say fruit, can't say faggot, can't say queer, can't say Nancy boy, can't say pansy. Can't say nigger, boogie, jig, jigaboo, skinhead, jungle bunny, mooly, moolignan, or schwatzer. Can't say yid, heeb, zeeb, kike, maki, uh, dago, guinea, wop, ginzo, greaser, greaseball, spick, beaner, oye, tiger, pr, mick, donkey, turkey, limey, frog, squarehead, kraut, jerry, hun, Chink, jack, nip, slope, slope head, zip, zipper head, gook. There is absolutely nothing wrong. You have to top it with the fact that anything you say now can trigger somebody. Or for some reason, some middle-aged white woman who really has a problem with everything. <laughs> like, they're the main... I loved when the Karen thing came out because it's like I've been dealing with Karens since my first open mic. It is completely true. This is what your your generation does. You go on Grinder and do hookups. You show every part of your body. You have no self respect. Oh my goodness, none whatsoever. Okay, okay. It's just crazy, man. And then you know you add on top of of the the this crazy culture. You add now, you know, COVID and. Uh, quarantine and jobs and and all these other issues man it's just a like a brew of uh bad stuff waiting to happen and you know that's that's my problem is you have these politicians who 99 percent of them are employed playing around with people who need work and need to feed their families and human beings are animals and you you start taking away every way for them to, you take away their freedoms and their livelihood you're going to start seeing that animal come out and we're going to regret. I mean, look, I, I got a family. If, if I'm, if I lose everything, I'm going to figure out a way to take care of them. And it's not, it's going to be at the expense of someone else. It just is. And we now have just become Sorry, I'm not trying to babble, but but off of what you said, we've become these people who we're all very layered. Every human being is layered. And we try to put this very simple stamp on every single person. You're right, you're left, you're this, you're that, whatever. It's the simplicity where that's just not who people are. Right. And right. we're looking at it the wrong way. Everybody is an individual. Everybody should be treated as an individual. And we've now become a thing where we're just blanket whatever it is that you are of what group you should be a part of. And that's a scary and dangerous thing to me. It doesn't make any sense. It is scary, man, because like there's no room in the middle anymore. You know, where I think most people, you know, are most of us are in the middle. Right. And then yeah. you got your extreme, your left, and, you know, and the pundits and everybody you see on the news that they are obviously uh, on one side or the other, but most people are in the middle, whether they lean a little left, lean a little right, but they all have kind of common sense. That's where I think the middle is, right? Yes. But now, because of this uh, new world order and all this craziness we're going through, I feel like common sense is being thrown out the window. And like you said, you're either here or you're there and that's it. And if you don't like hate the other guy, then you're not on our team. How can you tell black people they need to go back to Africa when white people aren't from here either? We're all here though, so it doesn't matter. Nobody, we are home. All of us are home. You're home, I'm home, they're home. All of us are home. We're just all trying to stand up for our own fair rights. You know? Which is so strange to me because it's always like, I want to have a conversation. It's like, no, you want to have a one, a one way <laughs> monologue where you tell me exactly how to think. And I have to just agree with you 100% or somehow I'm against you. This is the part where the white people start to applaud. Oh. And nod. Oh. Thank you, Jimmy. And it's not, that's not reality. I mean, we're, we're all, it's, it, we're all individuals. That, also with comics being held at the standard of what you can say <laughs> is offensive, where, yeah, sometimes comedy should be offensive. Comedy should provoke. It should blast through prejudices, challenge preconceptions. Comedy should always leave you different than when it found you. 
Sometimes comedy should be tasteless. Sometimes comedy should be racist. Sometimes comedy should, whatever it is that it can, it can be labeled as, it Com- shouldn't actually be that way. It just, a joke is a joke. And I don't, I don't understand when that went away. Why do I have to agree with, I don't agree with everything Bill Maher says at all, but I, I'm not going to say he's untalented. Right. As for our COVID infected uh, president, uh, tonight he's going to undergo a medical exam. Really, this is happening on Fox News uh, in a very special episode of Dirty Jobs. I don't know when that happened, when, you know, like comedy, it wasn't allowed to be offensive because comedy was always offensive. (laughs) Always. They won't let anyone talk politics in here because this stadium was dedicated to art, sports, and uh, any uh, useful enterprises. <laughs> yeah, that's the like Carlin said, and and I've always said on the show is Carlin said the the com- the comedian's job is to find where the line is and deliberately cross it, and you know to challenge people, to challenge status quo. You know the emperor has no clothes. That you know this goes all the way back throughout our history, and now that they're, they're silencing the comedians or, or taking the comedians so seriously, like if you are a Bill Maher that you know they hold him like hey well bill maher said or john stewart or whatever and 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 then if you're on the other side comedian then then you know you get burned at the stake for things that you said as well so it's just it's just crazy that the comedian the role of the comedian has become that important um outside of being funny and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duty of the office upon which you are about to enter so help you god I do. Congratulations, Senator. It's you know. a, and it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. No one should listen to what I say and think I was dead serious. So you can't. <laughs> right. If I'm making jokes, it's it's a joke. I shouldn't have to explain that. There's a microphone in front of me. <laughs> like ejaculating on a woman's face. It's rude. <laughs> Women don't want you to do that. I did that one time to a girl. She was pissed. Probably because it woke her up. The idea that uh, even having to explain all the time, like uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not racist, I'm not homophobic, <laughs> I'm not the, and, and you look at that, it's like, well, why would I have to? Why do I have to tell you that? If you want to think whatever, that's fine, but you would know if I was. It would be very obvious. How you doing, Mr. Trump? Think you're tough? A little bit? A little bit? You think you're tough? Yeah. You think you're something. You're a clown. People say you're a dick. I like to punch you right in the dick, huh? <laughs> well, the internet ruined Earth. That's what I would just say. I'm it, that way. <laughs> it did. It's cool we can talk like this, yeah. <laughs> but there's very few pluses. And everybody acts like they're, well, it's a double-edged sword. I'm like, nah, it's very, it's got a pretty hard edge, and there's a little part of it that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, this is definitely a, like... Social media has definitely uh, a, is definitely a huge part of the dismantling of our current way of life as we know it. You know what I mean? And it's yeah, yeah, and it's now particularly hard to be. You know, th- there's a big target for whatever reason on straight white men. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's it's oh yes. <laughs> I mean, geez, I mean, I, I didn't realize that. You know, our generation was going to have to pay the sins for the sins of all the ones before us, you know, in history. <laughs> well, what's odd, too, is like I'm Irish, Italian, you got Jewish, and it's like we're all paying for what I had nothing to do with that at all. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. even if it's like as far as reparations go, it's like by the time I've licked the stamp, you've gotten my indentured servant money, <laughs> which, by the way, indentured servant just meant slave. Right, <laughs> that's what the Irish and Italian were right, when yeah. they came to this. Con- I mean, it's the fact that we've turned all of our heritages into a color, and then you're saying you can't be called, you can't appropriate culture. Why? Why are we in America then? Right, exactly. It's like supposed I'm to be supposed a to, pot. yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to like. I wouldn't know what Mexican food was. I, I enjoy it because there's Mexicans that came to America cook delicious food and i got to eat it same with the my <laughs> italian relatives my irish people not so much they're just drunks but they brought you know scurvy and potatoes 
<laughs> so it's <laughs> scurvy. <laughs> yeah. Like it's it's all like that we're supposed to experience each other's cultures. That's the whole point. Like all of a sudden out of nowhere we're going to start yelling at uh, a white guy cuz he opened a taco stand. Like you can't do that. <laughs> we got to shut him down. Why do you want to shut everything down? That's all they want to do. They want to shut things down, cancel you, shut you up. And God forbid you on Cinco de Mayo, you put on a, the, a sombrero. You're going to. You know. right. <laughs> it's and just it's a, never it's never offensive to the culture. That's what I always find amazing. It's never the people or the, the the newest immigrants of that culture. Right. It's right. always the way back. You don't even know where like it. None of us would even be alive without America. Like, there's right. no way I would be part 90 things mutt if America <laughs> didn't exist. Right. So whatever happened before me, I don't really care. It, 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 I, I hate this idea that I'm, I'm like a live and let live guy, where if you're nice to me, I'm nice to you. It's all I really think. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you, it, even when it comes to like abortion arguments, we had Ann Coulter on the show who, you know, she triggers a lot of people. Could we keep our eye on the ball here? We live in a country where you can abort a baby up until it's been born alive. Yeah. <laughs> and she was talking about the abortion debate. And she said, well, you know, it's a human life. And I said, well, yeah, that's why I don't value it. It's why I think you should get an abortion because <laughs> I, I, so many humans are terrible. I have nothing wrong with it's nipping that in the butt. You know, I don't, I don't care. So it's like, <laughs> but people are, are allowed to their own opinion. It doesn't mean we have to rewrite law. If you don't want to have an abortion, don't. If you want to, knock yourself out. But it, we're now in this culture where it's like, you don't have to be proud of the fact that you have an abortion. Abortion, I salute you. Women, if you need an abortion, get one. Right, That's right. where we're becoming. We're becoming proud of things that we should be ashamed of. And I'm not saying you should be ashamed of that. There's plenty of reasons to get one. Don't get me wrong, feminists. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, we don't have to keep looking at things like they're great when they're not. Like, there's no, there is nothing virtuous in being a victim. Nothing. Right. Yeah. So, in, but there is something incredible if something horrible has happened to you and you can go past that and live your life and become an example and become something great. That's a wonderful thing. And this country allows that. And now we're seeing it reverse, where it's who wants to be the biggest pussy, I guess. <laughs> Mom, I know you want to defend me and fight for me and go off on comments. But I ask that you don't. This is my problem that I got myself into. I don't know how to put it. It is coming down to, to that, you know, this, this, you know, uh, complaining, whining culture, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 uh, you know, God forbid you do fight back or whatever you are vi villainized and, and, you know, and, and, uh, it's, it's just crazy, for, especially for old school guys like me or, you know, and, and, um, oh yeah, you, you know, and, and who just, we, I might offend somebody without even realizing it. Oh, that's how I am. I yeah, same way. Hey, hey, will y'all shut the hell up? I'm trying to study. <laughs> Look at him. He's trying. <laughs> He's actually trying. What a nerd. Look at the nerd. Look at the nerd. Look at him. Look at the nerd. Who you calling the nerd, man? I'm sorry. What? Ah! Oh, oh, shit. Hey, are you okay, man? Hey, what the hell? Are you serious? I'll turn that gay ass music off. You punch me because I'm gay? What? No. I. Oh, come on. <laughs> like you know i don't even know it's the pro the whole pronouns thing of you know what yeah. to call people nowadays is even nutty and i'm i it sounds bad but it's like i'm sorry i can't it's like do you do you care if we build the third bathroom no that's fine like exactly. i don't like the idea that I would walk into a bathroom and see a transsexual peeing in the urinal and my first thought would be like, well, I'll have to kill them <laughs> is utterly absurd. Exactly. I mean, if, if we're being honest, if it was 10 years ago, I'm going to tap my friend and be like, what the fuck? But now <laughs> it's so common. I, who cares? Like, it's out there. It's fine. Be who you are. That's the thing. And I don't think that that um, 
the, the woke people really understand of, of how many, uh, you know, the, the regular civilians are fine with it. We accept it. We accept everyone. You know, we, we, they have this notion, I think, that that most civilians, for lack of a better term, are adamant and hate them all. And we, you know, when we're out there with the torches and the pitchforks, no, it's the opposite. Right. It's the, you know, they're attacking the civilized, uh, civil, you know, the, the uh, civilians. It's the opposite. Yeah. yeah. It's this idea that um, I don't want to call it apathy, but maybe indifference or, but I would definitely say tolerance isn't enough because you have to celebrate it. Right. And I don't feel the need to have to celebrate. I can't, it's like, you really have to love it and like it. It's like, I'm a comic. I hate myself. I have to go to therapy <laughs> every week to not put a gun in my mouth. And you want me to admire you? I don't like, like, I'm sorry. Unless you're like my kid, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. So like, I can't pretend to, if I'm telling you that like, ah, oh, I'm going to go to the parade and really stand next to you. I'm lying. I don't want to lie to you. You're better than that. You know, it's, like, it's, just, <laughs> it, it's true. Yeah, we're not nobody. Nobody's perfect. We're all just trying to live in this in this society. And the, the idea that this woke standard should have existed 200 years ago, even even history teachers that I know were like, could you guys stop taking down statues? <laughs> it doesn't change anything. It's uh. history. Like, I get it if there's a couple that might trigger some people or it's like a slave master like this. Maybe. <laughs> all right, fine. Take it down. But <laughs> few and far between is it really celebrating any sort of oppression. For me, with the statues, I'm like, if you don't, if they're offensive, if they're truly offensive, like a confederate, whatever, that kind of thing, yeah. then I'm like, fine. But put it to a vote and, and you know, let's do it the right way. We'll remove it, you know, uh, in, in a civilized way instead of having, you know, the uh, the mob going to go out there and tear them down on their own. That's just when it, it gets out of hand for me. You know? Oh, I agree. It's destruction of property immediately, where as opposed to a, a group of people saying this is for the better. I mean, you have people pushing over Lincoln and it's like, guys, I don't know how to tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> and Grant. Yeah. 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 Grant. It's like, really? It's like even Robert E. Lee, like, look, I he was a he was a good general. That's why people looked up to him, because tactically in war he knew what he was doing and there's this idea that everybody in the south and everybody on the confederate side was completely pro-slavery it's not true that's not what the war was about but there's this i there's sort of this lack of education that they're trying to make the everything catch up to so there's just this one very simple narrative that there's all this hate and now all these these people are able to get through. You know, we don't have to work. We don't have to do this. We don't have to free everything. Right. <laughs> and there's just a point where, yeah, I believe that too. I was in college, you know, briefly. I was in high school way too long than I should have been. And then I was in <laughs> community college briefly. But I was a young liberal like anybody else was. But then eventually you have a home and you understand pride of ownership. And you start looking at your country and you realize where the flaws are. And you're like, guys, this is just the same knee jerk shit we've all been doing for so long when we're that age. Yeah, only like because of the social media and everything else, it's it's escalated. It, it's now going up to eleven. <laughs> <We're>... Yeah, <laughs> you can incite it. You know, when yeah. they even found they arrested some kid months ago in like Connecticut. It's like seventeen years old, you know, and they arrest him for inciting a riot, and it's like. This is who you were listening to when you were burning down. <laughs> uh, but, uh, like, that's what I don't get. Like, you're lighting fires to the inner city because Black Lives Matter, guys. That's not what you do. That's not my friend Mike is a, a comic, and I'll say because he posted online. His name's Mike Bonner, really great comic, black dude in Detroit. And right. there was a bunch of white kids about to, you know, riot in Detroit. So figure that out. <laughs> And he stops one and he said, you know, my church has a mentorship program 
And if you want to do, do that, it would really actually help out the community. It's just better than burning down the barber shop. If you really <laughs> want to help out, there's some kids in the community that don't have fathers. It would be great if you could donate your. T- and they started screaming all kinds of racist stuff at them because it's not about being anti racist, it's about being anti your own narrative. We're, we're a failed experiment as a country if we don't get past this. Well said, and I agree with you, man. And, and uh, I, I think what we got to do is, is um, I really believe we have to, I think comedy could, could save it if, if we mm-hmm. don't get canceled. <laughs> but, yeah. I, but I think if we could find the humor in this somehow and make the other side, the woke people laugh, at themselves because mm-hmm. they're so they take themselves so seriously if they could laugh at themselves then maybe we could kind of start to heal this thing yeah and i'll say it about both you know uh sometimes you'll go against uh the right or the left and people will take it very seriously where a group will say uh you know you i'll use an example i was wearing and, and the guy was kidding but i was wearing levi's on my show and i have a couple of levi's jackets and they we're upset because Levi's is anti-gun. Tonight, Levi's is catching both heat and support for a new campaign on gun control. So you can't then get angry when the left gets upset about something ludicrous. It's like, oh, are Levi's anti-gun? Do you know that uh, a <laughs> child with, <laughs> with ruined fingers who just cries all day weaved the jacket? Like, where do you think our clothing comes from? I don't care if they don't like guns. Right, what does right. it matter? I, I don't like it doesn't regardless of my opinion on guns. If I look at a jacket, I don't go, well, what's their, you know, are they, they, they pro gay marriage or what? Like, I don't want to be wearing some. <laughs> yeah, I, gotta... I don't want to wear some anti gay jackets. I, I, you know, I don't want to be wearing some. It's just I don't give a shit about political stance. It's the same as Chick-fil-A. Right, a, right. They want to be closed on Sundays because the guy's Christian. Let him be it. Right. It's like, I is the do you have chicken? All right. Well, <laughs> I'll just judge you on. I don't. Your political opinion means zero to me. I, that's why I wouldn't give it any respect or disrespect at that point. It doesn't yeah. mean anything. Dave Landau, thanks so much. Where can people find you and, and catch you and, and all that good stuff? Uh, DaveLando.com, uh, tour dates coming up, and then you can also catch me on Compound Media 4 to 6 p.m. every Monday through Thursday on the Anthony Cumia Show with Dave Lando, and at 7.30 Wednesday on A Fair One with uh, Tommy Pope. Dave, thanks so much for taking the time. This was a great interview, man. I really appreciate it, my friend. Yeah, man, dude, my pleasure. All right. Dave Landau, everybody. <laughs>